Well, sweet. All right, guys. Well, welcome to another episode uh, of the podcast. I got uh, my friend, another coach in the whole, you know, fitness space, Instagram, Twitter, whatever, you know, you're following us on, um, Zach here. And so Zach, you know, I'll go ahead. I'll let you just kind of introduce yourself, tell the people kind of your background, what got you into fitness coaching, and we'll just run it from there. For sure. Um, well, Will, thanks again for having me on. But yeah, so my my background, I guess we'll just start with, so I played four years of football at Miami University in, in Ohio, uh, go Red Hawks. And so played four years there, had um, really, that's like kind of where this all starts. So like from high school, you know, just was like normal kid, athlete, got like, you know, good grades and everything was just like a kind of a good kid. Not that I'm not. Uh, but, you know, went to school, a lot of things changed, got prescribed some medication that I probably shouldn't have. Um, and that's where a lot of stuff changed for me. And so, I, you know, I majored in stats or first bio pre-med and stats and analytics with football, trying to balance all of that and then have like a normal social life um, and really just developed like terrible, terrible habits over a course of four years. And it really just compounded. Um, so really, and we can like dive in deeper. I'm keeping a high level for now, but just have like kind of a breaking point. Towards the, uh, I stayed like an extra semester to finish up school. And this was after COVID had hit, so this was 2020. And it had a breaking point where uh, I started, after dealing with a bunch of health issues, I just like, if I want to live the life that I think I'm capable of. And so like, I never got on scholarship and a lot of my buddies did who deserved it. Uh, just a lot of things had occurred from my actions and me being not so disciplined, lack of conviction. And had a breaking point where I'm just like, I need to get my shit together or else I'm going to be a complete loser. You know, I'm going to con have continued health issues, uh, have trouble, you know, holding on to a job, have my then girlfriend who's, you know, now wife, she was, she had to deal with me and she was going to be gone. So all that was going to change. And so, you know, then I had my first jet sales job. I uh, did really, did really well there, worked really hard, uh, made it happen. Um, and now I'm at a series A tech startup in sales for them as well. Uh, account executive was SDR for nine months, full cycle account executive for nine months, and recently just got moved to fully inbound account executive, uh, closed over 2 million. Uh, you know, it, we'll see if that actually actualizes because we're based off of revenue from what we're bringing in. Some of the some of the deals aren't hitting what we thought, but there, that's neither here nor there. Um, you know, I've been working really hard, um, spent a lot of time really developing myself in terms of, of fitness, um, started my Instagram two years ago, as well as a passion project. Started just posting my my workouts and my food just completely for fun. Year and a half in, someone asked me to start coaching, and now I've had uh, I want to say fourteen different clients. Um, some I've done really well, others just like life happens and stuff. But been really loving it, and now we're posting on Twitter as well as of uh, almost a year ago. So, anything you want to dive into deeper there, let me know. Hope that was uh, concise yeah. enough. Dude, absolutely. I mean, yeah, you have. I mean, we've talked before too, before this podcast, and obviously sure. I've been able to see, you know, like your stuff on and Instagram and Twitter, and then we're both in launch socials. So, you know, we kind of just um, sure. cross pollinate a lot of our stuff. Um, but yeah, man, absolutely. I mean, obviously a very, very solid back background that we can dive into and break down. I feel like the thing that people would probably, you know, want to hear about the most just right off the bat would kind of be... Um, like, you know, the football career kind of playing at a D1 school of like, you know, what was that like in terms of, you know, character development, you know, both the positives and the negatives of that, if you can dive into that. Absolutely. Uh, so one, it's was the most rewarding experience in terms of character development. Um, it could have been, uh, but the character wasn't fully developed until after I got done and realized everything I wasn't applying to, uh, you know, my life that I could have been throughout that entire time. Uh, so like a, a really, really important thing that I learned there was dog. Like, yes, you can be good in high school. Like, I mean, I'm going to, I shared, so in high school, I shared player of the year with Benny Snell, who's in the NFL now. Um, but I just had a really good senior year. I had no junior year film, played QB, um, you know, like, and I, again, like high school sports, you know, everyone's the guy or like a lot of people are the guy, mm -hmm. but then you get to college, bro. And it's just like, what separates people is you, you obviously have the, the freaks that are going to make it to the next level regardless. But what it really is, is a conglomeration of a lot of good players. And what separates people is what they're doing on a daily basis. So I saw dudes, including three of my roommates, three of my best pals. They were my groomsmen in my wedding. Um, three of them got on scholarships. So there's like six of us who are preferred walk-ons. <clears throat> and these guys for 
four years. And then like uh, some other guys on the team, just day in and day out, that's the stuff they were doing that was aligning to their goals of being the best player that could be getting these guys getting on scholarship and being high performers. So I got to see that firsthand of what separated people from, you know, being a, a walk on and staying a walk on and staying on scout team versus the walk on who was consistently showing up, getting his good sleep, eating right, going to film, handling his school stuff and treating it like a job and just getting it the fuck done um, and getting and being successful. Uh, so seeing that firsthand and seeing what it takes to be like actually great um, was very eye opening. And I didn't realize that until after I got done when I really had to kind of like face reality and realize I'd become a person that I don't like. Um, dealt with a lot of self-hate, just being real, like still occasionally will, but um, it just being brutally, brutally honest, I actually tweeted about this recently. And then like identifying areas, identifying areas where you can improve upon right away and uh, taking that critical feedback and learning from those mistakes. Uh, that's how you're going to continue to, uh, to move forward. So mm -hmm. also yeah. what it takes again, like applying that to, to, uh, say like what I've learned, applying that to your real life job, whatever that may be, or entrepreneurship, if you're trying to start your own company, uh, it, you can apply all of that. And it's been an incredibly important in my, in my career. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, that's, that's been like, obviously I don't come from, you know, the same background as you as at all, but you know, I never played, played football or anything, <laughs> but this, the, there's similarities there with like, you just get so deep into, um, like entrepreneurship and that, and that kind of whole game as well as like, you know, me too, um, with like, just kind of like self-hate tendencies. And obviously, you know, you kind of have that, that avenue that we can go down in terms of like the gym or like, you know, stacking cash, whatever it may be that yeah. kind of helps us cope with it. Um, Absolutely. along with addictive tendencies. Right. Um, I think that's a big thing that, um, like log fits, he has that tweet, like freaking evergreen, evergreen tweet that he put out a while ago about how, you know, everybody's addicted to something, you know, you're, it, no matter what you do, you're going to, you're going to find some type of addiction somewhere. So it's just really about figuring out, you know, what can you become addicted to that's going to, you know, actually benefit you at the end of the day. Um, Absolutely. So yeah, yeah, that, no, that's great, man. And, you know, with your football career, I know you mentioned some stuff about, yeah you know, Hey, I wasn't going down the right path. This isn't the life I actually okay. want to live. Can you dive into more of that about, you know, kind of what was that like day to day and how it affected you? Absolutely. So yeah, this is, we can kind of open up about the, uh, the yeah. whole drug issues and whatnot. So I was prescribed what this was like, honestly, but again, I was so naive, just a dumbass 18 year old dog. I was doing bio pre-med and my goal was to, you know, like I got prescribed Vyvanse and Adderall at the same time, which that that's a mistake in itself. Like, again, I didn't know any better. Um, you know, I've always been like, kind of like, like I need, it's hard for me to focus, blah, blah. But like, again, I think most people do not need Adderall. I don't think anyone needs Adderall or Vyvanse. I think there's a ton of different ways to make yourself, you know, be more productive. But anyway, so got prescribed mm -hmm. and I immediately kind of started just abusing it. Uh, like, you know, doubling down, we're talking 50 milligrams of Vyvanse plus 20 milligrams of Adderall IR daily, at least. So that's like, that's what I was prescribed. So I'd yeah. be taking sometimes hundred milligrams. Of, I, I can even say sometimes it's almost every day. It's like usually like hundred milligrams of Vyvanse and 20 to 60 milligrams of Adderall. Um, and dog, I'm doing this for damn near four years. Um, so mm -hmm. I started after like, so like the first year, dude, I was pulling an all nighter once to two times a week. And I'm doing that while still like, so I don't sleep. I go to my chem lab and then I, you know, somehow I'm just a zombie. I take more, go to practice, go to film, do all that, do homework. And like just horrible, horrible habits that luckily as an 18, 19, 20 year old, your body can handle for the, for the most part, at least at first and your do your brain, which is the most overlooked. Like I was little did I know how much, like, I, I'm very fortunate that it did it. Like I stopped when I did. Uh, because I could, again, like when I had that breaking point, I saw my like mental issues and, and shit that was just going to be like ir irreplaceable or ir uh, irreparable. Um, so yeah, did that for, for four years, um, you know, towards the end. And then like actually about a year and a half into is when I started developing ulcerative colitis as well. Uh, so like having drug issues, 
still and again like if you knew me in college like you wouldn't know i was going through this stuff because honestly i was just kind of rolling with it too i was like oh shit like i'm shitting blood <laughs> like, oh, yeah. you know, oh, oh this isn't normal Ho hopefully this stops like i'm 20 years old and mm -hmm. i have these like health issues and i'm abusing these prescription drugs that, like again are prescribed to me feds like i was <laughs> i was prescribed um and then it would go away so i just like would put it to the wayside would still go out every weekend get getting blacked out every single weekend um and again i guess being a kid but this is a kid who like also came to school to get on scholarship and be a high performer and also get good grades and like hopefully get a good job and i just completely lost sight of that became a guy who i did i had a rap stint so i i meant to i meant to tell you about this in our conversation yesterday but, but i forgot um I'll maybe draw, I'll send you the SoundCloud. I'm, I'm not sending it out to anyone. Um, but I had a little share. <laughs> where, um, like, I just was so lost, bro. I just was like, my my priorities were out of whack. I thought like partying and like the social scene was where it's at. I'm like, this is, I don't know. Like, I just was, I was just an idiot, bro. I was just so stupid. Um, stock for football was still kind of going up. You know, I started out as a safety, but then scouting quarterback. And then I got moved to corner and then actual quarterback. And then re receiver my last two years and my junior year, I was like starting a little bit on special teams. Shit the bed, dude. I like act like, like my coach who recruited me left and then I dislocated my knee, but I didn't deserve to be out there, bro. I was like, I, I would make good enough. But it's like going back to consistency. Like, you know, one day I'm making a, a diving catch or something, but then I'm messing up a simple blocking assignment or I'm like falling on a cut, just like little shit like that. Like you cannot do like, if you want to be mm -hmm. on the field, especially as a walk on, you have to be so on your stuff way more than anyone else. And so, yeah, uh, then going into my senior year, barely played. And that's when I had to get like an emergency colonoscopy during camp. Um, and that's when it like really came kind of came all tumbling down. It was in 2019, August, you know, I'm losing 10 pounds a day at receiver competing for like a second team spot um, to like hopefully get some real reps. My receivers coach came up to me. It's like, Hey bro, you keep this up Got on the field. None of that shit worked out. So um, you know, I carry that a lot of that with me, uh, to this day, it's, you know, a huge motivational factor to why I even like try in my job and why I'm doing like fitness up on the side. It's like, I've gone down the route of like kind of chilling and like so trying to let things happen. And I hated how it made me feel, hated how, where I found myself. And so now every day I just like use that as a, as a fuel. And I also, I have my priorities more in order now as well. So it's not like I'm constantly mad or something <laughs> like I'm very, grateful for where my life's at now, but I definitely have, you know, those demons, if you will, like this, the dark side, um, in my background that like, really, I can easily pull out of it anytime. If, if I just like, if I ever need a, even a little bit of motivation, bro, I just think about how I felt, you know, like three years ago. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, I mean, one, I appreciate you sharing that stuff because not everyone's going to, you know, come on here and share that. So first off, I appreciate absolutely. that. And then, I mean, with that being said, I mean, you take a look at all the all the greatest athletes, entrepreneurs, founders, even sales guys. Yeah. And I talked about this with my my last podcast with Alex on episode three. But it's a thing like having that that chip on your shoulder, um, you know, maybe like fumbling opportunities, kind of not yeah. taking advantage of your current situation because you don't realize it when you're in the moment. Right. You know, you can you have maybe whatever you want to call it, ego whatever at the moment, and I've experienced this as well of, you know, you just feel like you're, you know, on top of things when in reality, you're kind of slowly, slowly um, just shooting yourself in the foot, basically. But yeah. you're right, in terms of, you know, on the bright side of that, you do now have an extreme amount of intrinsic motivation that you can tap in, um, you know, really whenever you want, which is um, kind of a beautiful thing about life that a ton of people overlook is a lot of people want to live in that middle, you know, happy ground and find like the comfort and the safety. And that's cool. You know, that's fine if that's truly what you want to do, but sure. me, me personally, and I'm curious if you can relate, relate to this, but I find a lot of what you want to call quote unquote happiness, fulfillment, drive, actual motivation and actual, even just confidence as a man to be with like the highs and the lows. So I'm curious if that's something that you see with and kind of believe as well in terms of, you know, highs and lows instead of just kind of riding the, the comfort line right in the middle. Absolutely. Uh, I think Brute talks about that a lot too. He said like the, oh, yeah. <laughs> he said the, uh, 
the the best state of man is being jaded. <laughs> it's just mm -hmm. he like opened up one of his face. Like I'm like this. I mean, he says some fire stuff. I can't say I agree with everything, but I just love that. Um, but absolutely, dude. I had the job. So my first job again, like, was sales, but it was much more. Just to give an example, like it was very much more like kind of just like even keeled, like week in, week out, very similar, same thing. Um, pretty predictable results, uh, predictable outputs, big company. And I was, I ended up getting like miserable, like, you know, great people, really solid money, especially first year out of school. Um, like, again, like, so everything was great about it. And that was almost mm -hmm. like the issue with me. I just started to feel like my soul wasn't on fire about it. And that's what like, I want my, my soul on fire. Like I want something where I'm waking up. I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to win. But damn it, if I do, it's going to feel great. And if I don't, then I can learn from it and come back and be better. So, yes, I very much agree with like it just made me it makes, I think, life, you know, more exciting, bro. It's like where so much is like monotony, just doing the same thing day in and day out. It's like when you get to experience those highs and lows, it makes it that much more beautiful. So, yes, I very much, very much agree. Like because now my job is like. You know, it's some enterprise, some in market, some SMB, and it's like you don't know, and it's in a really tough parking industry, and it's so it's basically real estate deals and stuff falls through all the time, or it takes six months, and it's just like you go through a roller coaster of emotions. Um, and I just think like what I'm learning here, and really, I work with a lot of really great people that like are also a bunch of really hard workers and can handle this, and that's why they're there. And it's just been so so beneficial. Um, and I'm also like applying what I'm learning there to my fitness coaching, uh, which also my fitness coaching is just a byproduct of me finding something that I'm passionate about and just putting it out there. Uh, so another kind of example of outside of the middle, every time you post online, you're getting judged. And I am someone who has had to de deal with that. Um, and I think I've like started posting even more because I'm even more running away from my default of like of giving a shit or giving way to caring way too much about what people think. Um, when in reality, it's like, there's, that's all in my head. Like, unless even if people are telling me like, you know, I hate your stuff, like good. That means I'm doing something right. You know what I mean? Like, like if you're, if you appeal to everyone, then you're like, a, I forget what the saying is, but if you appeal to everyone, you're not really appealing to anyone. Uh, you gotta mm -hmm. just gotta like put your stuff out there and see who, uh, see who resonates with it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you do have to have. I mean, and I've, I've been through that too, um, with For like, sure. putting myself out on social media. Um, uh, and I've had a multitude of accounts, like some of them faceless where, you know, we've ran up like, you know, 24,000 followers, 10, 10 K followers. Um, but then also, you know, like my personal branding, personal branding, it's so cringe now, but <laughs> I do, I know. Personal, it's yeah. Cringe buzzword. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Anyways. But yeah, no, absolutely. With, um, just okay like basically we put ourselves out there every day i mean i see you posting stuff every day um i'm pretty much the same like i try to get something out there every day as well um mm -hmm. and obviously i mean you can you can try to hide behind the reality that okay people are going to judge you people are going to look at your stuff maybe even you know make fun of you and some things but it's like okay one that's free engagement so i'll yeah, take absolutely. it absolutely <laughs> and and then two like at the same time like all those people and even I met, you know, some of these people like personally that are like, oh, this, your stuff is cringe, whatever. It's like, okay, one, you're definitely not making the money that we're making. And then two, it's also the fact that like you deep down are too insecure or you haven't experienced, you know, the same things that, you know, I've experienced or that in your case, you've experienced like, you know, someone who's going to see your stuff and, you know, be like, oh, you know, what, what the hell is this guy talking about? What is this bullshit? They yeah. haven't been through, you know, D1 football and that entire story that you just told about your, you know, ulcerative colitis is how you say it. Ulcerative colitis, close. Yeah, very close. Okay, <laughs> okay, close, close. Yeah. But yeah, you know, all that all that stuff builds up all this, this like fireball of energy that you can use for that stuff. Just be, you know, really like, you know, I don't care uh, at the end of the day. So I think that's a huge part of it for sure is, you know, you just have to, you know, put yourself out there one way or another, where it's, whether it's business stuff, um, you know, fitness, like getting underneath like a heavy bar is not always going to be the most comfortable or even sane thing to do. You kind of do have to go to like, you have to flip that switch a little bit. Um, 
so yeah, I think, I think definitely learning how to do that. Um, at least for me, you know, that can be a challenge sometimes, but it's also something, um, that, you know, I embrace and I realize that, you know, it's something that at the end of the day, it's going to set me and you apart from, you know, the masses, so to speak. For sure. Absolutely, mm-hmm. man. Yeah. Um, and so really next, I want to dive into just more about kind of the the pain, because one thing that you said that stood out to me, and you've kind of mentioned multiple things about it, but you talked about back in, I think, like 2018, 2019, you hit like this breaking point. Was there like a singular event that you were like, all right, you know, I'm done. I have to switch my ways. Or was it just kind of like this, this buildup of all these different things? Uh, yeah. So um, it was 2020 when I finally just, cause I was done with football mm-hmm. and like, that's when I got at, like the pictures I post for my trend or my, my transformation are from 2020. Uh, cause I got mm-hmm. done with football in January of 2020 and I just let go of myself. Uh, you know, just like stopped working out, started eating like shit. Uh, I was eating nachos every night. That was like my thing on Snapchat for a bit. Like I would just post my, <laughs> my nachos. and I thought, and I just like had never had to deal with that. I was very blessed with like a fast metabolism, but I mm-hmm. was no longer an athlete and I, it caught up to me. Uh, but it was September, I want to say September 12th, um, right around there. Cause I like, remember it, uh, obviously it was like a lot of things leading up to that point, but I had just gotten done with my internship, uh, for like the job I ended up like taking for my first job. But I was still like kind of, I was still like taking some Adderall, um, you know, finishing up my stats and analytics degree, which dog, that was so hard. Oh my gosh. I reached my point of like, intel. like I was, I'd be jobless if I tried to be a data analyst or data scientist because <laughs> I just, I can't handle it. Um, but I was sitting there like finishing up one of my classes and I started to, so I started developing Raynaud's uh, disease as well, or Raynaud's syndrome. I forget what like the correct term is. But it's when your blood flow to your basically extremities, but like your hands and feet, like starts like getting drastically reduced. So when you've taken mm-hmm. legitimate thousands and thousands of doses of Adderall and Vyvanse over a course of five, four years, which is a really strong stimulant um, and stimulants are vasoconstricting. So I started getting going numb and like my feet and my hands and it spread to my forearms and my calves. And that was like a third, probably like my third issue I had developed as a result of my terrible, terrible living habits on top of the autoimmune disease. And then just like even the mental shit I went through, which we can dive into more just because I just wasn't there totally. Mm -hmm. And I just, I just, I, it was a singular moment where I'm just like, I'm, I don't give a shit if I fail classes. I don't like, I don't care anymore. Like I need to put myself first. Um, and I just stopped, I never took Adderall again. I just told my doctor, like, don't, don't refill my prescription. Um, you know, like, he's like, are you sure? Like, even though the doctor was like, are you sure? Like, well, I'm like, he's like, you know, people like you, I'm like, duck. No, I no. Yeah. Get, this, get this away from mm-hmm. me. Uh, so I went with through withdrawals for those next like three months in terms of, like, you know, I just had extremely, extremely low energy sleeping like 12 hours, 13 hours a day. And somehow still, again, thank God it was pass or fail at that time for uh mm-hmm. the semester due to covid so i got really really fortunate with that again kind of like a silver lining um where like I, w- I wouldn't have passed if we didn't have that i don't think um and yeah just i i got through it and i took it upon myself and that's why i'm very anti you know self-loathing but i'm also very sensitive to it and like i can relate to it and i get it and i want to again help others i just received like a nice message from a guy on twitter who i played with and just like I don't know. You just mentioning just like how I got through it. And now I'm helping others do the same. And that's like what also sets my soul on fire and why I started posting on Instagram is because I know what I went through and I know what I fixed for myself. Uh, I also like regained my faith in God, which I had lost during college, just became like basically an atheist um, and just like thought everything just happened for just because, you know, like no coincidences, no divine intervention and stuff and got through it. And, you know, I'm living a much more fulfilling life now and, trying to help others and hopefully inspiring others and really trying to put myself and my family in the best position possible. So uh, Mm -hmm. going from there to here is pretty cool. And I know it's like, again, for some people who know me really well, it might be hard to like get that. And I I do understand that because again, from my high school back, I grew up in a very, like I grew up in Dublin, Ohio, really like nice suburb, nice. I'm very love my parents to God. Like they're, they've given me everything and I'm so grateful. Um, But what I hope to like, show people too is like your 
habits and your decisions over time like can compound and no matter where you come from it can put you in a space that you never thought you would ever be in and i just mm -hmm. became a totally different person that i just hated just felt like a shell of who i was and i knew i had to change so mm -hmm. made it happen yeah yeah absolutely man and with, with what you said about um because this is something you know i've experienced as well um but in terms of especially like your past like what you said about um, kind of like self-loathing, you know, like self-hate. Um, mm. I mean, can you dive into that and talk about that a little bit more of, you know, cause maybe like somebody watching this can probably get something from it. For sure. What do you want me to like, just like how it feels and how I got over it kind of, or yeah, just like if you, yeah. I mean, if you could talk about just kind of like personal experiences with that in terms of, um, what it was like, you know, how it affected you. And then, um, how did you kind of turn? Cause it's obviously negative energy, right? Like how did you turn that Absolutely. kind of like negative energy more into like, you know, positive benefits? For sure. Uh, I like that last question a lot. And that's actually a great segue to how I guess I would answer. Um, mm -hmm. Because like energy is neither created nor destroyed. So, you know, it's energy. So you can convert that internally, metaphysically, however you want to like think about it is like, just use it towards something. The only way that you're ever going to get better if you are in that kind of state where it's just like, you you just hate yourself where you've come, like how far you haven't gone and where you found yourself after four years and just feels like you blink of an eye, like, damn, like I did not reach anything I set out to and it's a hundred percent my fault. Like you can ask some of my teammates, sure, like they'll back me up. Like some stuff didn't work out in my favor, but I didn't deserve it to, ha to work out in my favor. I, I didn't mm -hmm. deserve that. And so it's, it's, it's my fault. And the only thing that's going to help you feel better is just moving forward in a different direction, you know, like just finding little things day by day that you can add into and growing from. So like for me, it started off with just diet, just with my diet, it just started off with that. And that's where like, I think so much stuff on Twitter now is so played out and like to be the best person ever, you have to have a good, I, there, I know there are tons of good people and hardworking people who don't have a good diet, you know, and that's just like, that's like an afterthought. But for a lot of people, when you just are so down, you're like nothing feels like it's good and everything feels like loss and stuff. Start with something small that you can add into like every day. And it's, for me, it started off with my meals, just cooking and getting that down. And then it turned into, sorry, someone's, it's turned into, you know, my fitness a little bit. And then it turned into my job and my, just my daily habits of just like treating my, like just being respectful to myself, not even loving myself because self-love is obvious. like you should not hate yourself, but like self-love gets, I think gets like overinflated into like, you should eat, you know, 12 donuts because you're sad. Like, no, because you're, you should respect yourself enough to, because you're sad, eat a, like eat a good meal and maybe like, listen to like, what's your job or like, what do you, what do you think you want to get better at? Like, listen to something that's going to improve you. Like it's, not something that's going to set you back more. That's self-respect. Um, mm -hmm. So I, those are some actionable things I think people can do if they're going through that. It's just like finding ways to take steps forward. Yeah, no, absolutely. Because, I mean, that's huge, right? Is I really like what you said about the whole self-love um, and self-respect thing. Because mm -hmm. you're right. I mean, a ton of people, um, and there's, you know, dichotomies and two sides to this in terms of, you know, to the extent where you're talking about people like on Twitter and stuff where, you know, you have to have everything perfect and, um, you know, the you can't have, you know, <laughs> yeah, the optimizers, <laughs> no seed oils, no plastics ever, oh. no Bluetooth ever. And it's yeah. like, okay, that's, that's like cool and all, you know, it's probably good for your engagement. Uh, that's, you know, a good reason why they do it. But also at the same time, it's like, you do have to look at the reality of majority of people their situations, you know, what they're going to be like, for example, you know, guys like me and you who, you know, we kind of coach the same client base, you know, nine to five um, guys in sales, entrepreneurs, yeah. professionals, you know, us coaching those guys, it's like, you have to be realistic with, um, yeah, you know, if you have, if you're doing door to door and you have a 12 hour day, it's going to be better for you to choose, you know, Chipotle over Burger King versus yeah, absolutely. Where you're That's go a small home thing. And, yeah, absolutely. You know? Yeah. So it's, it, it's just those like those nuances that a lot of people don't, don't pick up on that. I like that, you know, you brought up about 
sometimes all it takes is just kind of these small changes in terms of, you know, if you look at your situation objectively and you're 50, 60 pounds overweight, okay, you know, this, the, where you need to start is you just need to move more, you know, probably eat a little bit less, you know, incorporate some higher protein stuff in the diet, but Mm -hmm you know, you don't need to in, go into your kitchen and, and install like, you know, a reverse osmosis, you know, hydration yeah. filter. Stuff. Like I filter my water and stuff. Don't get me wrong. I'm not sure. just drinking tap water, yeah. but um, that's like, you know, kind of what I'm getting across to. And you can probably bounce, bounce off of this, but a ton of people don't have realistic expectations of what they can do to, you know, elicit some changes with their fitness. So I'd love to, you know, if you want to talk about that, in terms of maybe how you help your clients, the stuff that you put out on Twitter in terms of realistic steps that they can take to, you know, make improvements, see changes. Absolutely. And some really good points there as well with like the water filtration system, which again, like, I, like I'm probably going to get one soon. However, I think that's yeah. like, that's like top of like, don't worry if you're someone who doesn't even know where to start, like, don't worry about that now. And unfortunately, mm-hmm. A lot of guys, I think, post that stuff, which again, it's for engagement. And a lot of their followers are farther, maybe like down the line to where they could kind of like conceive of adding that into their lives. But Mm -hmm. also like what you said, just, excuse me, sorry. But what I try to um, really get across to Twitter, especially because Twitter is a little bit easier than Instagram to just like rifle things out there. And that's what I love about it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like just, just, and every time I, every time I leave a draft, I regret it. Like, I'm just like, oh, it's a little too, like, maybe edgy right now. It's like, it's not even edgy. It's just like, maybe kind of an opinion <laughs> about, I don't know. It's like, again, that's just like another step I need to take where I just need to realize there's absolutely nothing wrong with me, like, sharing certain things. Now, there's like other things that you shouldn't probably talk about. <laughs> but when, in terms of, with, when it comes to like food and fitness, it's like, I'm not hurting anyone um, unless I'm saying <laughs> spreading complete misinformation. But, anyways, to get back to what you were talking about. I guess I do get really tired of like hearing all these different things that, yeah, people promote that are saying, and they usually maybe sometimes I'll also, also like sell it too. And like, they kind of have like a, uh, a reason they're, they're like incentivized to kind of say like, be like, you need this to live a healthier life. Like mm-hmm. you need this, this bovine liver supplements now, like, which again, no hate. Cause like, I know a lot of people that I really like sell, liver supplements and stuff and i'm not hating on that but it's like that should be a later stage like people need to get people need to not jump to that stage you just like have two to three good meals a day to start (laughs) like just cook Mm -hmm. two to three meals a day to start before you start worrying about liver supplements and a water filtration system and i will say people should probably get more glass pyrex i think it's not a whole it's only like Mm -hmm. it is like double the price but you still get a good number of like uses from it and that's like a small thing that I think a lot of people could do. Um, just like, it's just better storage. And that's anyways, that's, that's one thing. Um, but yeah, just like sticking, getting the basics down before you add in those additional things, I think is what needs mm-hmm. to be put across more and lifting yeah. three, two to three times a week, just like little stuff like that. Total body hell dude. I'm going to start again. Like what I really love is I do love fitness coaching, but like what really gets me going Anyways, it's just like helping others for free. And then like, if they want to pay me, then sweet. Um, like when people are like, I need that extra set, but like, I'm going to start just posting like free workouts or like 30 bucks for like this whole program. I'm actually going to drop four here soon uh, for the people listening. Um, okay. The the Chad split, it's going to be fire. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> the athlete, uh, mass yeah. gainer and back on track. So I'm about to drop four. It's going to be like probably 30, 40 bucks a piece, three month plan where you can you know track your your weights and stuff and yeah so i'm going to be dropping those soon too but again like one-time purchase and then you have that at your disposal but anyways starting simple starting to the basics that's how what people mm-hmm. should uh, be hyper focused on and then adding in those other things as they get comfortable with the basics mm-hmm. yeah absolutely and that like with what you said about okay yeah down the line um yeah i mean i would love to have a house like with like internally with the uh, the plumbing and stuff, you have like water okay. filtration. I think that's awesome. Um, and don't get me wrong, like, you know, I have a shower filter. Um, I am drinking like this, this water bottle is plastic that I'm drinking out of. So it's not, I'm not perfect, but For sure. um, I'm with you there in terms of like all of my, 
when I do meal prep, like all of my meal prep stuff is um, the glass containers, which is just, it's a little bit more aristocratic too. It's like you pull out yeah. the, the glass container and Absolutely. it's like, oh, you, you don't have the, the 25 cent ones from Walmart that, you know, is going to leach all the plastic into your food. So which is there's real, levels which too. Is, I'm yeah. saying, I think people should try to avoid that as much as, as, as possible, which is, it's a very simple change to do so as well and affordable. Mm -hmm. So absolutely yeah and it's i mean there's just levels to the game right but um but yeah with what you said um that's definitely true and i tell my clients you know the same thing it's like i'm not expecting you to start evolution academy or start any fitness program at that and you know do an entire overhaul of you know your kitchen even you know you're gonna have to make some changes you know mm -hmm. you're gonna have to work hard don't get me wrong but it's like, you can't expect everyone to just like 180 their life in a couple of days or a week. You know, it takes nice. a long timeline to actually make those big changes. So probably something that you'll agree with me here is like, okay, if a new guy comes in and, you know, talks to me, wants to talk about coaching and stuff, it's like, I ask him straight up, it's like, okay, realistically, you know, how many days do you want to work out per week? Like, what are you looking to do? Are you looking for this to be something that's, you know, crazy intense, you know, off the wall, um, stuff like that. Or are you just looking, you know, I want to lose 20 pounds of fat and that's all that I care about. Um, yeah. so I think that's a, that's a huge thing as well. Um, that I'd, I'd actually love to hear you talk on this in terms of there's a hundred thousand, you know, fitness coaches out there. It seems like everyone and, and their mom is a fitness coach these days, yeah, right? Literally. <laughs> <laughs> no, literally it's true. Literally. But how, what do you feel about, um, and obviously, you know, you have some programs coming out and stuff, but um, mm -hmm. I mean, what do you, what do you really like about, you know, your coaching? Obviously you have, you know, the background of a D1 athlete and, you know, the, the experience you get from, you know, working with strength and conditioning coaches there. But I yeah. mean, what, like, what is your coaching style that, you know, you really like of how you like to train, how you like to train other people? Um, you can go in and in as depth, uh, in as much depth as you would want, but um, would just like to hear you talk about, you know, kind of what you like to incorporate, what you like to give to guys. For sure. Uh, so I'm, I definitely kind of like what you said, like, what's your overall goal? Like, what, it, what are, what are you hoping to get out of this? That's obviously just like with any discovery call and any sales role, especially for inbound, like I don't do any, you know, cold DMing for my fitness or anything, lots of cold outbound for my, my job, but, yeah. uh, yeah, finding out like what, what's their end goal that they're hoping to get from it. And it's kind of being like, Hey, listen, like you're telling me you want to go, you know, you want to look better and like have more energy for your work, develop better habits and get more and look more lean. Like just like, those are three, like one of the guys I recently worked with. And it's like, listen, like I'm going to give you everything that you need to make that happen. Like I have, like you have me as a resource a hundred percent of the time. Like I, you can text me, you can, whatever you need. Like I'm your resource. I'm going to give you a, generally I like to go with three to max four day lifting plan. I have one client who just respond, seem to respond a lot better to higher volume and like more days a week. Um, you know, he sends me like clips of him lifting and stuff and he doesn't really have like an athletic background. Uh, so it's a little bit different. Um, but most of the people I've worked with have like a, somewhat of an athletic background. They get some of the intensity that has to go into, uh, these lifts, especially one of the guys I work with, like former athlete, um, and totally gets it. But I'm like, I'm going to give you in, in your meal plans, all laid out in front of you, based off what you told me you like the number of grams of protein you need to eat. I don't, I don't count macros other than protein. So I'm not going to have you count macros. I can give you general ideas of what you should put in there. Um, but what's really going to come down to is, are you going to follow it? And are you going to be like totally honest with yourself and stick to it for these next three to four months? Or I have some people who've been with me for since so it started in January. So I have like someone who just joined for their, or three people who just joined for the 10th month. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's just really just laying it out them. Like I, you're paying me. So like what you want to do with this is up to you. I'm going to make sure I'm going to do everything I want to like, or I can to help you reach your goals. But it's like also being very straight up and like, brother, this is on you as well. <laughs> like this is, it's mm -hmm. not some magic pill that like it's it's working out and it's having a good diet and following a plan that like I've applied to myself and ha I have proven results for myself as well as a few people now, which is dope. Um, 
and just really making sure they know that it's it's a it's a give and take it's both sides Mm -hmm. yeah and yeah no that's definitely true and it's it's been the same thing for okay like when me and you both you know sign up for launch socials and we Mm -hmm. start that thing it's like okay you know you 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 know you can invest your money and all of that but it's like until you actually start to take action with it and Mm -hmm. um really you really just you know put action into it every single day uh and you just you do have to be ruthlessly honest with yourself i think that's um i'm gonna butcher this quote but it's it's by nick saban but it's it's something about you know bad players and stuff you know they they want to hear more about the the lies of like hey you know you did okay or you're you're doing good you know you're, you're making progress but it's like the actual like great players you know they just want the truth so they can get better uh and it's the same way with like the the greatest clients um out there is you know they're the people that are like okay just give it to me straight in terms Mm -hmm. of you know what i actually need to do to achieve um my goals so yeah man i mean that's that's absolutely the truth is you have to you know be honest with yourself you know if you're a guy listening to this and you know you're not satisfied with where your physique is you know just like you know zach has in the past just like i have you know you do have to take an audit of your life and be like okay there are certain things that i don't jive with that i don't like about my situation what can i actively do to you know change these things and switch these things to put myself in a position where i'm at least just one percent better um than i was yesterday because it's we live in a society especially with social media um and this is, you know, probably a byproduct of just everyone posting on Twitter and Instagram about For this, sure. but it's 10 times easier to consume the motivational content, you know, sit there on your phone, get motivated and stuff, but just taking the simple steps to like, okay, I'm going to cook up a pound of ground beef, uh, as simple as that is cook up a pound of ground beef and eat it. Um, it's so simple and it's going to make you feel better, you know, whether you're bulking up or, or losing weight, it's going to put you in a better position. So um, I think that's something that guys really need to look at is like, you don't have to overcomplicate any of this stuff. And, you know, a lot of the time, whether it's business, um, sales too, it's like, I don't know about you, you can speak on this, but like, if I'm trying to follow some elaborate script, you know, word for oh, word, yeah. that's going to make it perfect. It's just gonna, it's just gonna ruin it. It's like, go back to the basics of simplicity of just, you know, asking open ended questions and, you know, helping them guide themselves to an answer. So I think that's a big sure. philosophy for me. Um, there definitely, you know, as we grow our companies and our, our fitness coaching, more complexities arise because you have a ton of different clients and kind of like systems to, to keep everything moving in place. But really what majority of fitness is, is just getting back to the basics and making sure you have the accountability and the resources to stay there, you know? For sure. Yeah, really great point. Uh, and you mentioned uh, like consuming the hustle, it's uh, the hustle porn as like, like yeah. that stuff is so real. And I had to catch myself because I started like seeing that actually in 2020 when like, that's when that kind of started. I remember on, like TikTok and stuff, like all that stuff started up and, you know, I was like, yeah, I'm going to read X number of books. And, um, you know, I started off with uh, Think and Grow Rich, which like a lot of people quote, and that's actually like where I actually got the idea of transmutation of energy um, which I think is really an interesting concept. And that's what I was bringing up earlier, like with negative energy turning it into for momentum and positive energy. Um, but caveat or like side note, apparently mm-hmm. that dude is totally cat, like Napoleon Hill. Apparently he, I don't want to talk down on a on dead man's name, but like apparently he totally lied about meeting John D. Rockefeller and like all and Thomas Jefferson. And like, apparently he totally, he's completely lying. <laughs> so that's a side and, note. Yeah, I know. Which kind of is like, he kind of ruins the book, but he has lots of good things to take from it. Um, but that's like the 15 year olds on, he's like the 15 year olds on TikTok nowadays. Which, which one? The yeah. one that's like, making... um, <laughs> I don't know. I saw this one video. I can't, it was, it went around on Twitter for a little while, but it was this guy and he had this Amex and he's like in a pool and he's talking about, he has like a Rolex on too. Um, <laughs> no, I, no idea if it's going to be real or fake, but he's like, 
yeah, this is how I make like, you know, 50 grand a month from, you know, my business. And it's basically him um, just taking out a bunch of stuff on his credit card. And then like he goes back and he disputes, disputes the charge and, and, and something like that. It's some type of like, like oh, scam or like funnel. Like yeah. That. yeah. Just a straight up grifter. Um, Grifters, and, man. you know, of course, there, of course, there's a, a freaking course funnel at the end of it, you know, like, you know, buy my course, I'll show you how. Um, For sure. But yeah, in terms of books, because this is something that's been on my mind and, and Brute actually tweeted about this. I I haven't read a book in a while, like talking about like sitting down, open up a book, read it from cover to cover and like actually digest it. I mm. probably haven't done that. I mean, let's see, I dropped out of college like a year ago. I probably haven't actually sat down and read an entire book in probably a year and a half to two years. Mm-hmm. So I'm curious, um, is, is that something that, um, you know, you've kind of been doing of just like learn by life experience? Are you, you know, obviously there's benefit to books, but like, for sure. I mean, are you taking the time to sit down and do that stuff? Rarely. I mean, I listen to, so I've listened to a, a few audio books over the last course of the year for like that relates to sales. But what's again, like what I was just the most important thing ever is just actually doing shit. Like you're going to like, just do it and then like maybe listen to the book. So like for me, I didn't listen to, uh, so when I started out as an SDR at my company where I'm just like straight, like we're, again, we're, I was a 21st employee. We, you know, we're cold calling these commercial real estate companies. They never heard of us. And so I just went for it. I just started calling. Um, and I wasn't good. I was, you know, mm-hmm. not, I just was struggling a little bit. Um, you know, I hadn't had a cold calling role previously. Uh, but then after I had been struggling for a few months, that's when I started going to the resources of like the podcast, following Bowtide sales guy, listening to my own calls, listening to other people's calls, reading some sales books, and then actually applying because now I I saw the context. You know, when you don't have context and you don't have any experience behind it, it's all just redundant and you're actually kind of wasting your time, I think. Uh, Like people will be like, oh yeah, before I, you know, before I start in sales, I need to like read this, this, and this. Or before I start a business, I need to make sure I read, you know, 100 best ways to start a business by PJ, I don't even, you know, see what I'm saying? Like, I guess, or I'm not trying to hate on anyone, but like, you got like, just try first, bro. Like get, get feedback, get like real data points that you can apply or like relate back to, cause you can't learn anything without context um, or apply it without context. So then once I was struggling, went to the resources and came back, I ended up, you know, being our uh, on our small team, a top performer and getting promoted and stuff. And um, even my boss like saw it all. Like he told me, and he's one of those guys who pulled me straight up. He's like, dog, you are not good enough. Like you thought that was good. Mm-hmm. Like that's, that was not a good call. Like that, that shit sucked. <laughs> like he didn't say, he didn't say like that, but I'm being a little, yeah. Anyways, being facetious, mm-hmm. but he was basically like, Hey bro, like you got to change your idea of good. And most people, mm-hmm. a lot of people would take that feedback and thank God for my background and do what our coaches were telling dudes, heinous things, heinous things on the football field, just like, yeah, totally. <laughs> out of pocket. And it's so funny when I talk about it now, but it's like so many people, if they were to get that feedback, like, especially nowadays, like people want to do get the most amount, like people expect the most with the least amount of work. And they don't realize that like to actually get the shit that they really want it. it, it no matter what you do, it's going to, there's going to be some discomfort and some growing pains and some challenges. And most people would have taken that feedback and be like, oh, he's so mean. Oh, he doesn't get it. He doesn't care. It's like he did that because he does he does care. And it made me a million times better. Mm-hmm. So yeah. long answer. So just try things to learn and then read. <laughs> and I yeah. occasionally read. Yeah. I, I have a book right now, but I, I don't read very often. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that was, dude, that was a great answer. Because I love how you dive into all that stuff. Because, bro, I mean, it's true. It's like, I mean, I've done... I've done code calling in the past before. Um, absolutely sucked at it. Like it was terrible. I've done sales for other stuff before. Now, granted, there was some like, okay, there was like no training and, and there, you know, there's other for stuff. Sure. Like there that wasn't training at first really for me as for, mm-hmm. but anyway, still. <laughs> but, but yeah, that is, that is part of it of like, you kind of have to work through those shitty experiences of what's going to work for you and what's not. But um yeah, I mean the so I told you about the guy that's you know, kind of mentoring mentoring me for like sales right now, who's an insurance agent, and like huh. this guy, like it was literally our second call together before you know me and you got on. He was like, "All right, let's role play." 
you know, it's like, boom, like right into it. Role it's play, like, it's yes. not like where it's not like, you know, cause you can take it slow all day and this applies to everything with uh, fitness, whatever your goals are. It's like, you can, you can play the slow game and, and try to kind of just slowly comfortable, comfortably work your way into things, but really where the progress is at and where you'll, you'll find out very quickly, like, okay, this is what I suck at. This is what I'm good at. Um, and, and, you know, work to kind of interweave the two to just get at least good. And then you can start to get great. Um, but yeah, you know, just right off the gate, like, okay, you know, let's role play, you know, let's run through this and then, you know, Hey, you're, you're messing up here. You're not saying the right thing here. Um, and, you know, just working through that. Um, I think that's probably been the best thing, um, for me for sure to make progress. And, um, I don't know if you can relate this at all, but like, Logan, for example, like log fits, like, you know, I was talking, talking to him one time on a call and he was like, you know, a lot of it, man, is just like, you have, you can use all these tactics and stuff. Um, but a lot of it's just like getting better and kind of having that mentality, um, you know, in the back of your head of like, you know, you do have to get better. You do have to perform at a higher level. You do have to win more. Um, Mm -hmm. even though we are building businesses on social media, um, And, you know, you're probably dialing too. I mean, you're dialing to probably people that are like across the country, right? Then they're not like local. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. mostly mostly in every different state other than Ohio. Okay. Yeah. So it's kind of the same thing with you. It's like, you're not going to directly see that impact on like a local community level. Because, yeah, I mean, like, for for example, like me, when I wake up, it's not like I'm, I'm going and I'm going to clock in at a job or anything where someone's going to watch me and make sure I do my stuff. It's like, motherfucker, I have to come in this office and make sure stuff gets done on my time. And it's, you know, it's the same thing for you too. It's like, you know, you have that, that sales job, but in sales, I mean, it's like, you know, you eat what you kill. You can, you can get in there and can be lazy all day uh, and not get anything done. So yeah, I think, I think that's a great um, kind of connection there in terms of if you want to make progress, like it's going to be hard no matter what. And you need that just critical, honest feedback. Absolutely. From someone who's done it before too, is what's also super helpful. Like my VP of sales has grown a company from like zero to series B and is now our VP. Like he's a baller. He's proven it. He's jumped on sales calls with us. So when he gives coaching, it's like, it's crazy the number of people who try to like get into coaching for, I see it on Twitter where they're like, yeah, I help scale sales teams. Like I help you sell. It's like, have you ever actually sold anything? Like, I'm not saying, and again, there are tons of people who have, but I've definitely seen it before where there are people who get in those manager roles or those coaching roles where they've never actually like, you know, they have no proof in the pudding. They have no sauce. They've never developed their own sauce. That like, and those are people you're not going to listen to as much. And so I've been fortunate to have like a, a, a VP like that who has that sauce um, and can, can tell people about it and make people better. And you said some oh, role playing. I can't believe I left that out. That's a if you're in sales and you're listening to this, you got it. I, it's so painful. I know it's awkward. It's it sucks. It's almost kind of boring. But that's one of the best things you can do because that's when you practice your objection handling, your opening against like real time. It's like a practice, bro. It's like a full speed practice, and that's where like a, like athletics can apply a lot to sales. And I've been made fun of by some got like some guys one time. He's like, "Why are you taking it so seriously?" I'm like. <laughs> get the hell out of here we'll talk in like you know 10 years um and I'll, I'll show you why i was taking it seriously uh but that's where that stuff can apply man you got to think of it like practice like film um and that stuff will make you so 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 much better so mm-hmm. and again to caveat i'm not anywhere i'm like i'm not successful but like i've made progress and i've had like some of my own like personal success over the last couple of years where i think i'm you know in a position where i can at least like share these kinds of things that have helped me so mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, dude. And that's, I mean, I'm right there with you in terms of like, yeah, both of us have obviously made, you know, we've made progress. We've had some wins, but it's like the level that, you know, me and you are trying to get to, like, it's always, it's always going up and we're always going um, to that that next level. (laughs) Yeah. And it's like, there's one thing too, that I've had to accept is like, man, you're always going to have to, you know, learn, you're always going to have to do something to get, get better and better to basically, you know, move the pieces um, on the the chessboard, so to speak, uh, you mm-hmm. know, in your favor or in the direction, you know, that you want to go. It's like, I was talking to you this yesterday. It's like, okay, cool. Like, you know, I- I'm good at sales and like I'm building, 
um, you know, Evolution Academy and, you know, we're delivering results and, you know, everyone's, you know, having a good time, but also at the same time, it's like, man, like I have to get, you know, more athletic myself. Like I need to get stronger. I need to be throwing up more weight, um, for sure. you know, for myself. And then also for just like Evolution Academy as a representation. So that's like a, that's for a sure. huge thing for sure is like, you can taste these wins and, you know, you can, you can have, you know, great times too. Like, don't get me wrong. I mean, I love to, uh, I wouldn't call myself like a, a huge party guy, but yeah, I love to go out and have a good time and, you know, get drunk every oh, once yeah. in a while. Absolutely. But you got at, to. It's good for the goal. Yeah. It's, it's balance, right? But Absolutely. at the same time, um, it's like, man, it's just like, in reality, it's like, I have so far, far to go. And I mean, we're just getting started, honestly, like both of us. Absolutely. Uh, to you guys, so you're 23, I'm turning 26 here on month. Uh, so mm -hmm. it's just funny being on Twitter. I wanted to like, say this to, to you, like mid younger twenties guys, um, like as someone who's like really kind of got started on their journey at 23 versus like some of these guys like Will or like, you know, Logan, Nick, um, a lot of those other guys who, you know, dropped out of school and just again, put themselves in the fire right away and have proven that like, it's very possible, but you're not behind. Uh, you got to move at your own pace. Like I just, if I would have tried that at 18, bro, I would have been on the street. I would have been, I would have been like, I just, I couldn't even conceive of that from 18 to 22, bro. I was partying every week. Like I, I just wasn't ready for it. But now then at 23, I grew up, um, or I guess like right before I turned 23 is when stuff started changing. I just want to share with you guys that like, you're not behind. Um, but you, if you don't move fast or if you're just not being, if you're not moving forward, then yes, you will feel like you're falling behind. So that's why you just like take action every day. And like Will said earlier, getting 1% better. Um, but still having fun. No, we're going to die at the end of, like we're going to die at the end of our lives. So like try to have the best experience possible. Um, so you can still go out occasionally. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, when it calls for it, but get your, you can get your priorities right and you'll, you'll learn. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that, I mean, really the biggest thing that I would just take from that is, um, you know, there's, there's obviously people that for you guys listening to this and watching this, you know, you're going to see on social media, someone younger than you, that's more successful in terms of in physique, health. financials, whatever. I mean, it's, it's out yeah. there for sure. There's, there's, you know, 18 year olds, um, for whatever reason, somehow that are, falling you know, out. Right, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Falling out and stuff. Um, and that's, that's one, that's kind of how it goes. And you can use that as motivation to kind of piss you off and be like, man, you know, why don't I have that? Why am I not in that position? And, you know, I think that's perfectly fine. Do it in a, like a healthy manner. Um, sure. But also with what Zach said is like, realize that, you know, you're not behind. And the biggest thing that I've had to learn is, you know, if you don't feel confident in yourself or you don't feel like you're moving forward or you don't feel like you're making the progress or seeing the results that you want, um, you got to take a look inward at what are the actions that I'm taking every day? Because I mean, if you're, if you're sleeping in late, if you're just kind of being lazy with your nutrition and, you know, maybe you hit the gym when it's convenient for you versus, you know, you don't go when it's not convenient, then you're not going to feel any, any level of just natural confidence or conviction in, you know, your ability, you know, what you're, what you're selling. Like if you're in sales, uh, even, you know, with what you're doing or even like on a, uh, romantic perspective with like relationships, all that stuff is going to be basically like at baseline bottom tier, because you're not proving to yourself every day that like, Hey, I'm capable to actually go out and do this stuff and that I'm living, you know, the result or the actions that I'm putting every day uh, will compound to that lifestyle that I want someday. So that's the Absolutely. biggest thing that I would share, share with people just to piggyback off of what you said, Zach. Um, it's a great point. But yeah, brother. Yeah. I mean, we're right on an hour. Um, I would love to give you a chance. You know, you you already mentioned you have those programs coming out, but I would love to give you a mm -hmm. chance, you know, plug your stuff, you know, tell people where they can find you, like Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. For sure. Yeah. So I uh, appreciate that. It, for Instagram, it's just uh, Zach Hazlett Fit uh, at Z-A-C-K-H-A-Z-L-E-T-T. -T. It looks like Hazlett. Most people say Hazlett, <laughs> um, but that's the IG. It's mostly just meals uh, and workouts. And just like a chance for me to post my story a lot. People love the food, especially girls only follow me for the food for the most part. Dudes mostly follow me for the workouts. Um, and then Twitter, just at Zach Hazlett. I converted just like my personal Twitter into that. Uh, really like Twitter. I try to keep it 
you know, well, I just try to keep it authentic and stuff that I just really find interesting. I want to post about, um, you know, with my plans, I'm coming out with those. I do coaching, but I'm also doing a free discord. Um, I'm going to be, you know, it's free, but I also want to be selective. I don't want to just like let anyone in, like people who are going to bring bad vibes. Don't want that. Um, I don't think that's going to be a huge issue, but just, uh, I want to put that out there. And then I'm dropping a free document as well that just kind of covers my entire approach for these last few years, kind of really restates a lot of the story I've told today with like why I got into fitness and, um, you know, my approach to it and how I uh, want to help others do the same. So really appreciate you having me on, dude. Uh, yeah, I don't really have anything else. This is, I hope, do you have any more questions for me with anything? No, I mean, not really. I think we, I think we covered everything like pretty well. I mean, we talked about kind of like your past kind of catalyst of what got sure. you to where you're at today. And then, um, and we're yeah, not even man, close. I mean, definitely. Just, like you said, we're just getting started. So it's, uh, mm -hmm. I got married back in May. If you guys are wondering, <laughs> um, shout out to launch yeah. social as well. Uh, I mean, my boy, Joe, who I know was actually one of your clients as well. Uh, Joe, mm -hmm. you know, he's the man he's helped me a ton with just like, my approach to stuff and like helping me make like my, my document that I dropped and everything, obviously Logan um, and Nick, uh, I had Joe Wilson, Reese, uh, Sophie Rogers, all you guys shout out to uh, Mom socials. And then all the guys that like are, are kind of mutuals like Rami, Jake, um, mm -hmm. Nick, I'm sorry guys, if I'm leaving any of you out, I apologize, but Oh, Alex, how can Alex. I forget about Alexander? Yeah. How can yeah. I forget about <laughs> Alexander, the boy uh, who I think is going to college now too. Isn't he? Yeah, he's going to go to college. <laughs> okay. Well, Alex, have a good time in college. I understand where you're at. Um, I know you're a baller, but it's okay. You you can party a little bit too, brother. So I want you to. I want you to enjoy that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I, I he definitely needs to have a good time. I need to hear some stories from him. So, but yeah, dude, I, I think that's, I think that's great. Like um, launch socials for sure. I mean, they've been, they've been a huge help. Like, um, you know, Logan was kind of the first guy that I connected with about that, but Nick, sure you know, Joe, you know, the entire team, um, it's been a, it's been a huge help to just push me and continue, continue to push me in the right direction. So, um, Absolutely. yeah, man, I mean, that's really all I got. Um, definitely appreciate you also taking the time out of your day to come on here. Cause I know that people listen to this, whether you're in sales, whether you're you know trying to get in better shape, whatever it is. Um, I know for sure you got at least one or two things um, from our podcast together. So, I mean, definitely if you like it, uh, go down below. I'll leave um, Zach's information, check his stuff out. Um, also, you know, feel free if you really did enjoy it, you know, leave a like, subscribe to the channel. It definitely helps grow the podcast and, you know, share our message um, to other guys out there that need it. Um, but yeah, Zach, definitely appreciate your time once again. And thanks for coming on. Thanks a ton, dude. Yeah, it was a, it was a pleasure. I also forgot to say shout out to Kieran and, and Noah and Jake Youngblood as well. So all those cats, yeah. got to make sure. But um, all right, dude. Yeah, really appreciate you. This was a pleasure. So happy I could, uh, you know, share my story a little more. Mm -hmm. Absolutely.